everyone, this is June Blender at Sapien Technologies. And today I'm here with a little tutorial on how to build a very simple GUI app in PowerShell Studio. The little app is called Get Version. Let me run it for you and you'll see exactly what it does. Not surprisingly, it displays versions. Actually, it displays the name of the operating system that I'm running and its extended version number and the extended version number of the version of Windows PowerShell that I'm using. It has a little close box and an OK button. And for a pretty simple app, it's pretty useful. So let's build it. You can build it along with me. I'll click File, New, New Form. And for beginners, I always recommend using a dialog style template. This is a fixed template, a template that the end user can't resize. So you don't have to worry about the elements in your form floating around when the user resizes the UI, because they can't. So let's click Select, and I'll save it. And I'll save it as, well, we'll call it Get Version Demo. And you'll notice that it's saving it as a PowerShell form file. You can convert it to a PS1 file later. And let me resize the form. As the designer or author, I can resize the form even though the end user can't. Okay. Now I have a form and I have a button, but I want to display some text. So I'd like to use a label for that. I'll go to my toolbox and in the control section, I have this list of all the different things that I can put on my form. They're called controls. There are buttons and checkboxes, data grids, and uh, calendars and panels and all sorts of things. It's like a toy box. Um, but I need a label. So I can either scroll down to the label element or I can type L, which takes me down to the first control that begins with a letter L, which is label. And I can double click label to add it to my form or I can click and drag. Now you'll notice that when I place the label on the form or move it, these blue indentation guidelines appear to show me best practice offsets from the other elements in my form and from its sides. So I'll place my label and then I'm going to resize it so it can hold all the text I want to display and I'll use those indentation guides to keep those best practice offsets. Now I want to um, put some text in my label. And let's back up here for just a minute and talk about what we really have. I have a form and a button and a label, but what I really have are objects in the system.windows.forms class. So for instance, my label is a system.windows.forms label object. The top part of this toolbox shows all of the things I can put on my form. And the bottom of my toolbox shows the things I've added already. And in fact, PowerShell Studio has conveniently placed the form object in a form1 variable, the button, o uh, the button object in a button OK variable, and my label object in a label1 variable. You can change the names of these variables. We don't need to do it right now. But these are objects, and they have properties and methods, so let's use them. I'm going to switch from designer view to script view, and I want to write something in that label box. So I'll use the label variable and its text property, and let's just start out by with a simple hello world and save. And now when I run it, the label says hello world. That's a good start. Now what I really want to write there is the name of the operating system and its version. So to do that, I'm going to revert to my good old PowerShell knowledge. I'll use the getSim instance commandlet and the Win32 operating system class, and I'll save that object in an OS variable. Then, instead of writing hello world in this box, 
I can write a string that includes, whoops, backspace, it includes the caption of that object, which is the name of the operating system. Now, this has an error in it, and let me show you the error so that you'll know not to do that. Let's click Run. And you'll notice that instead of the caption, I have some type information. And that's because in a string, and this isn't particular to GUIs, but in a string, when you're calling a property of an object, you need to make sure that Windows PowerShell res um, evaluates that expression before it writes it in the string. So you need to use a sub-expression. And to do that, you type a dollar sign and then enclose the expression in parentheses. Great. Now when we run, we actually get the name of the operating system. Now we also want the version of the operating system. Let's create another sub-expression and we'll use OS version. Let's run that. And there we go, we have the name and the version of the operating system. Now let's get that version of Windows PowerShell. That's PS version table dot PS version. This needs to be in a string and it will need to be in a sub-expression too, right? So let's write, whoops, Windows PowerShell and then this goes in parentheses and there's our dollar sign. We want these to be together to connect them is use a single string with a new line character to put this one on a second line. So let's grab this out of this string and append it to that string. So what we have here is all of the information that we want to display and we're using a simple assignment operator to assign it to the text property of the label. Okay, let's run it again. And here we go, we have all of the information in our label. Now, it's not quite the right size. Let's see if we can fix that. For that sort of thing, I'm gonna go back to Designer View and change the font size on that label text. So I'm gonna click the label element, go to the font property. Oh, it's very small. So let's make that a bit larger. Let's use 12 point type. See if that works for us. I'm also going to change the text property of the form so that it doesn't just say form. Let's find the text property. To make it easier to find the properties in the properties box, here's the properties element and I click alphabetize. So it puts all of the properties in alphabetical order. It makes it easier to find. I click the form and I make sure that what I have is the form and I want to change the text property of the form. So instead of saying form, it says get version. Now let's run it one more time. And there we go. We have our get version text box with the name and um, version of Windows PowerShell and the name and version of the operating system. The box is a little big, so I'm gonna make one more adjustment to resize the box. And there you have it. That's our little get version app. We made it with PowerShell Studio and we made it in just about 10 minutes. Thanks for listening.